presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. It is a beautiful night for baseball here at the Big A. The Angels, of course, trying to bounce back after a tough loss against the Minnesota Twins. Still winless against the Twins on the season, but tonight is another night. It's game two of this three-game set against the visiting Twins. Hi, everybody. From inside the Big A, we welcome you back to Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West. I'm Victor Rojas along with Mark Dubiza, who is salivating right now because we are at the Shock Top Brewery down the right field line in the club level. Open 5 o'clock on 7 o'clock game nights. Anybody's welcome to join in. And terrific food here. I know Gooby's ready to dig in, aren't you? Oh, no question about it. Here, little steak sandwich. That's a shocker for me. I know, right? Let's talk a little bit about uh, Johnny G. Vitella, because if you're taking one positive out of last night's game, it was Johnny G's four-hit game. First of his career, Victor. I mean, he squared up every baseball. Take a look at our tools and trade brought to you by Ram Trucks from the get-go. Level swing. Right down on the baseball that he has at times this season. When he struggled, he lifts that front shoulder up. Single. Single again. Then he had a double, which he drove the ball well. And the home run hit late in the game. Still a good swing. Didn't get underneath that baseball, hitting down on the baseball, creating that lift. A perfect game last night as far as swinging the bat for Giovatella with a four-hit performance for Johnny G. Uh, he's getting hungry, obviously. We're going to talk real quick about the starting pitchers. Irvin Santana, the magic man on the mound for the Twins. Jaleesh has seen for the Angels. Yeah, Irvin won 96 games as an Angel. Shasheen, last time out here at the Big A, threw the ball exceptionally well. Had a complete game against the Tigers. Punched out 10, walked one. Hopefully, he'll be able to go out there and dominate that strike zone once again. All right, start eating, big oh, man. Yeah, no doubt. We're just about ready for baseball here. The big A sit back or relax. Going to bring you the lineup and the first pitch when we return. This telecast of Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is brought to you by Hyundai. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. By Jack in the Box, the Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack is back. Taste it before it's gone. By Mercury Insurance, on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com to get a fast free quote and see how much you can save. And by the Jeep Renegade. Find your inner Renegade and reach your highest potential with an EPA estimated 31 highway miles per gallon.
of this three game set against the visiting Minnesota Twins last night a 9-4 Twins victory and the Angels have lost uh, two of three obviously to the Cleveland Indians over the weekend dropped the opener and the struggles here at home continue Gooby guys are uh, still battling it out still trying to figure it out and of course the injury is piling up and uh, means the bullpen has to be used quite a bit the innings pile up for the bullpen yeah, as this well is looking for some continuity really in the offense too they allow some mistakes to be made on that pitching mound at times so I think when you see with the lineup here for the Angels tonight a little bit more as far as a, a versatile line to do some things for Mike Sosha. You know, the one thing Jared Weaver said after the game last night that this team cannot afford to make mistakes on the little things, and that yeah. certainly reared its ugly head again last night. And we saw some of that in New York after yeah. having a really good series. Everything was clicking in Pittsburgh and a tough one there, and then obviously some games against Cleveland too. So when they put it all together, especially on the defensive end, that really helps out the pitching staff and allows the offense to relax. Yeah, we're being told that Andrelton Simmons could be rejoining the ball club as early as tomorrow. Maybe he plays, maybe he doesn't. We'll have to see. He'll have to get reevaluated once he gets back here. But uh, at least that's one everyday piece that the Angels will get back in the lineup and we'll see how things play out. Maybe Daniel Nava three, four days away from rejoining the ball club as well. Depth has been an issue, obviously. This team has been tested. The 40-man roster certainly has been tested. I mean, it, we're seeing so many moves as far as the 40-man the roster guys on and off that 40-man roster pretty much seems to be every other day. It's a difficult task for the organization right now, but bottom line is if you pit, play well, pitch well tonight, win this game, everything will take care of itself. Jolie Chassin's ready to uh, start his warm-up tosses. We'll take a look at Paul Molitor's lineup for the Minnesota Twins. It's 20 and 43 on the season. Have Eduardo Nunez leading things off at shortstop. Robbie Grossman had left Joe Maurer at first. Trevor Plouffe at third base. Brian Dozier at second. Oswaldo Arce is the DH tonight. Max Kepler in right. Juan Centeno is the catcher. And then Byron Bucks at batting ninth playing center field. Taking on Chassin who's making his seventh start with the Angels. One and two and a 4-4-2 ERA. His last game at home, very dominant, went complete game. It's been very good at times for the Angels. There's always that one big inning that's going against them, but my go-to is for Sheen to be successful. Two-seam, four-seam fastball. Both have a lot of movement, control that movement, trust the middle part of the plate to have that running action, and then finish with his slider. He's got a devastating slider. He can change speeds with that pitch also. Let's take a look at the defense for the Angels tonight. Jeffrey Marte makes his uh, start out in left field. Mike Trout of Zeneco, Calhoun in right. You know, Escobar, Gregorio Petit on the left side. Johnny Giovatella, C.J. Crone on the right. Carlos Perez behind the plate. And Marte, you mentioned that Victor getting that first start career-wise in the outfield. He, nine years in the minors and major, never, never played that outfield position. Will make his debut here tonight in left field. Got a chance to get a, a play out there to left field last night. Been taking a lot of fly balls and Mike so just comfortable enough with him in left field to make sure to keep that bat in the lineup. Nunez ready to lead things off for the Twins. Mentioned they picked up their 20th win last night. Now 8-22 out on the road. The Angels with the loss find themselves at 13-20 here at the Big A. Facing a uh, former teammate, Nervin Santana. We'll talk about him once he takes the mound. Nunez hitting 324. 10 doubles, a triple, nine home runs, 24 runs batted in after going one for five last night. Twins striking in the first inning for a run. 10 total hits. First one tonight in for a strike. Slider missing down and away. Escobar playing just about even with the bag at third base. Trout shading. Nunez out toward right center field. It has been a nice find for Minnesota. This one's out toward right. Got him to reach for that breaking ball. Calhoun's got it for the first down. Part of the reason why Mike Sosha was more comfortable putting Marte out in left field was because of Kashin's ability to throw those two-seam and four-seam fastballs, get swings off to the end of the bat. Might not be a lot of action for him out in left field. Last start for uh, Jolice was Thursday night in New York. Gave up five runs, five and a third, seven hits, three strikeouts, three walks. All five of those runs occurring in the fifth inning. As you pointed out that night, he has had the propensity. Unfortunately, if he's going to give up some runs, he gives up multiple runs very quickly. Kind of just kind of unravels for him. As Grossman breaks his bat, hits a one hopper to short. Petit's got it. Two down. Yeah. 
Hey, in tonight's game, we are participating in the Home Run Challenge once again. Tonight, every home run in this game raises $7,400 for prostate cancer research. You can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. Yeah, Victor, going back to what you were talking about that big inning at times, we both said that a number of times with Jolice. The thing is, he had such great movement on his fastball, then all of a sudden, that fifth inning, he tried to hit the corners. When you have that type of movement, it's very difficult for an umpire to call that a strike. So just trust that movement, middle part of the plate, either sink it down and away or cut it in on a left-handed batter. Mauer takes strike one. The old uh, Crash Davis line, right? Uh, don't think, just throw. Just throw, especially when you have movement like that. If you have a guy that a relatively straight fastball, well, yeah, you're going to try to hit the corners. Mauer at 283 on the year. That's the count, leave it up on him at one ball, one strike. Multi-hit game for the Twins' first baseman. Two for five, two singles, an RBI, a couple runs scored. I didn't miss by much. It's two balls and a strike. That's a pretty good indication of that movement on his two-seam fastball. Just, just barely off the outside corner. Moved a lot. Three and one. You see what Jacine's trying to do against Joe Mauer to stay away, force him to hit that ball to left field. 3-1 pitch, foul back, full count. Wait, Maurer is a big guy. When you get up on top of him down there on the field, he's about six foot five. Very strong, hit the ball very well. Inside out approach he has. Three two on the way. Mauer lines went out to center field. Now it'll fall in for a base hit. A two-out knock for Mauer. Puts a man off for Trevor Plouffe. Here's tonight's cold hard facts, which are brought to you by Clean and Crisp. For his light. Talk about the injuries that his pitching staff. The Angels started the year with eight candidates for that rotation. We talked about that all winter in the spring. Five have been on the DL. One spent some time in the minor. That was Shoemaker who came back has been very, very good since that point. Two of them have been in there from the beginning, Weaver and Hector Santiago. But you've seen has done a very good job. Like we said, most times he's been very dominant. It's that one beginning you've got to try to avoid. Plouffe takes a strike. Third baseman hitting 240. And his fifth home run of the season last night is one and only hit. The three run shot off of Weaver in the third. Twins hitting a total of three home runs last night. Two of them off the top of the wall. Bucks in the left field corner, and then Grossman out to center field. Still count the same, though. You don't get a half home run for that. I would have voted for that. Uh, you would have. Of yeah. course you would have. <laughs> Half a run on the ERA. Yes. <laughs> it's only fair. <laughs> it could have easily bounced back into play for a double. Right. Right. I mean, you could make an argument that you did your part to keep the ball essentially in the yard. It yeah. just. I, I, I blame defense. <laughs> Do that a little bit better angle right. where it just pushes it back in into the play. corners. I can see that. <laughs> that little two foot fence out there. Center field, right field especially, no, not so much. <laughs> One, two. That's down low. Two balls, two strikes. So we had sun popping through the lower level of this ballpark. Casting a couple of ribbons of sunshine out toward first base. Across the mound. Some near the back at second. What a perfect day it was today. 67 degrees at first pitch as that fastball is upstairs. Full count. Even though we're not going to be in town this weekend, it's supposed to get up around 100 degrees. That's what I heard. We go. It'll be a little cooler up in that in the Bay Area, yeah. that's for sure. Oakland and Houston. Well, upcoming road trip. Well, that won't be cool down there in Houston, <laughs> that's for sure. Mauer takes off and Bluth pops it up. 
thrown into foul territory. Will make the catch in the inning. Comes to an end. One at the bottom of the first. Escobar, Calhoun, and Trout coming up for the Angels. The Angels game number 65 of the season bringing up the rear of the West 12 games back at Escobar lady things off in third Calhoun and right trout at center Albert DHing tonight. He's the cleanup hitter CJ Crow back in the lineup at first base Jeffrey Marte out in left Johnny Givatello second Carlos Perez behind the play Gregorio Petit rounding out that starting nine. Of course he is the shortstop taking on a 33 year old right handed native of San Cristobal in the Dominican Republic the former angel the magic man himself young. Urban Santana. Is there any more nicknames? Did, no, I, did you, I miss one? You got them all in there. That was all perfect for Urban Santana. Fastballs 90, 95, slider very good with and change of my go to's though to be successful against the Magic Man. Fastball mistakes. He's has, he says home run balls are part of his game and aggressive early. Oh, counts hitters in 435 against him. Escobar fouls off the first pitch. Yeah, the uh, self proclaimed home run pitcher. It's part of my game, he said. Part of my game. One of the best. He was so much fun to be around. Making his 12th start. He has struggled this year. One and six, the four, seven, seven ERA. This is sharply hit towards short. That's past Nunez, who was playing Escobar to pull a little bit. And you now is on board with a leadoff single. And my Hyundai key for this game. Oh, a flow rider. Well, right around. You got to be able to square up that baseball. Again, against Urban Santana, when he makes a mistake, you get that barrel of the bat on that round baseball and drive it with authority, get a couple out of the ballpark tonight. Blow right up. Yeah, yeah. In the house. No doubt. Stick it around? Yeah. <laughs> Just like fireworks. Oh, yes. Calhoun swinging first pitch. Lofts one out to Grossman, who has to come in on it. One down. Can't forget about Grace also. Yes. Special performance by Grace. Yes. Brings up Trout with a man off. Told my family about it. They were pretty excited about it. My oh, kids. Oh, they are. They were going Stoked. nuts. Almost as excited as they were for the Tayo Cruz concert many months ago. Oh, yes. I was reminded of the uh, favorite cheese conversation we yes. had with Tayo Cruz. That was fantastic. Yeah. Still one of the nicest artists I think we've ever had in this booth. Yeah. We've only had one. Yeah. He's by far one of the nicest. Yeah. No, 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 no question. Yeah. <laughs> Trout DH last night in center tonight. 308 average, 13 home runs, 44 runs batted in. One for four last night with a single in the first. Now three for seven against Santana with a home run. Slider missing low. Evens up the count. Urban 16 to third inning, 67 hits, 48 strikeouts, 21 walks. Signed a four-year deal prior to last year. 
before the season started. Got popped and had to serve an 80 game suspension. Ended up making just 17 starts for the Twins last year. Making his third career start against the Angels. One and one, a 287 ERA. Good numbers throughout his career in this ballpark. 51 and 38. That's driven out to the alley right center field. Nobody's going to get this one. It is off the wall. Escobar got a good jump from first. Will be stopped at third. Trout almost had to dive into second base because that ball ricocheted right back to the right fielder Kepler, and it's a double for Trout. Yeah, play well in that outfield. That ball was crushed by Trout, which is good. To, it's good to see. That's a 95 mile an hour fastball down. We talked about jumping on fastballs. That's right in the middle of the plate, the perfect zone for Trout to do some damage. Buxton did a nice job with the bare hand. Makes a play and throws it in quickly. Trout's got to keep that foot on the base. Nunez trying to apply that tag. But defensively, Buxton, he is very, very good. Gifted out in center field. Can cover a lot of ground. Did a nice job of reading that ball off the wall and getting it in quickly, preventing a run from scoring. Second and third, one out. Pujols at the plate. Infield back in normal depth. And Albert grounds one back up the middle. It's a base hit. Escobar will score. Trout is going to be waved in. Here comes a throw from Buxton, and it is in time. A one-hop throw fielded cleanly by Suzuki, and the Angels have a one-nothing lead, and Albert ends up at second base. Talked about Buxton, what he could do in that center field position. That's a pretty good throw. He charged it very well. And Trout initially has to make sure that baseball gets by. Nunez in the shortstop position. But a perfect throw and quick tag. Mike Sosha taking a look at it in the dugout. Comfortable with the call. For that quick one hop throw. And able to catch that ball. That's the thing, be able to catch it and apply a tag for Centeno. What a play he made there on that short hop. Yeah, pardon me, I think I said Suzuki, but you're right, Centeno getting the start tonight behind the dish. Caught him at where the throw was. It's difficult for Trout to find a way to be able to slide towards that plate at that point. And especially you don't want to see Trout try to dive in with that right hand, especially getting hit with the pitches a couple days ago. But RBI number 42 for Albert Pujols. Just passed Lou Gehrig on that all-time hit list. 27-22 for Albert Pujols. Albert loves the history of the game. That's certainly something he's proud of. Two balls and a strike on Crone. Starting first baseman tonight, hitting 253, five home runs, 26 runs batted in. Three one count. Oh, sinking fastball down underneath the hands. Good velocity in the game so far for Santana. 94-95. Pools at second base. one nothing Angels. Here's the payoff. Crone flips it down the right field line. Kepler racing over. This little slice foul. The fight off a pretty tough slider from Santana. Usually his go to pitch when he's trying to get a strikeout.
Another 3 2. That is driven out toward right. Kepler has a bead on it, though. And toward the corner will put it away for the third out. The Angels take the early lead on the single by Pools. Lead of the second. Angels up 1 0. A one nothing lead. Dozier, Arcia, Kepler coming up to face Jolisha Seen. It's our pleasure to welcome in the Hall of Famer himself, Rod Carew, to the broadcast booth. And uh, it's great to see you. Figures to take a, a Twins Angels <laughs> matchup to finally get you back in the booth. Well, it's good to be here. And I, you know, I've been following both clubs all year. So uh, they're near and dear to my heart. Most importantly, how is your health? How are you feeling? I feel good. You know, I have good days, I have bad days. But um, all in all, uh, things things are good. So the doctors are all giving you some positive stuff as far as where your progression is. Yeah, they uh, they feel that um, by going through my whole body and making sure that everything is right and there's no nothing going on on the insides that I should be okay to get a, a transplant. So uh, we're looking at August. And if it does happen in August, uh, like I told you earlier, Mark, I want a 21-year-old heart. <laughs> I, I, I want to I, I want to make a comeback and see if I could hit some line drives. You mean it's not like a Amazon or eBay where you can go bid on the one that you want? No. <laughs> but it's it's uh, it's not just about me. It's about all the other people out there that that aren't doing what they're supposed to do to take care of themselves and take care of their hearts. Because I really felt like I I was this healthy guy until I was uh, punched in the face and uh, found out that uh, it's a big problem. And the gentleman that caught your first pitch today, Clyde Wright, after learning what had happened to you, went out and got checked out. And all of a sudden, he had to have a procedure done. So it's, it's a little scary. It is scary, you know, and um, it was nice of Clyde's wife to call Rhonda, my wife, and said that she's taken in, in to get checked because um, he didn't know anything was going on with right. his heart. And then he goes in and he's next week, I think he had like a triple bypass. You know, I mean, when you talk about that getting checked, how I mean, how important is for to get your message out to everyone to get their hearts checked? Because a lot of these things can be prevented by making sure you, you get all the things done as far as checkups and stuff well you know I, uh, from what I know heart failure is like the number one killer of people in this country and I think that um, there are certain steps that you can take you can go to your doctor you can get checked uh, I didn't do that take my medication didn't finish my medication stuck it in the medicine cabinet uh, because 
when you do that, you don't feel like there's anything else happening to you. But boy, I sure did find, I, I found out the hard way. You know, and I, I think if I continue taking my medication and going back to see the doctor that um, I probably would be where I am today. I'd probably uh, be in a better situation than I'm in today. Well, I know the Angels during their first road trip uh, played the Twins in Minneapolis. They kicked off the Heart of 29 program. It's something that, uh, that you and Rhonda, your wife, decided to, uh, to, to kind of create some funds for the American Heart Association. The Twins obviously are obliging. They're wearing the red tops on certain days and trying to raise funds and match funds. And that's got to feel uh, great for you that an organization, Twins, Angels stepping up to kind of help you and Rhonda kind of fulfill that. Oh, it is, and I thank them because I think it's you know it's important that uh, we all do what we can to to help and do as much as we can to help. And both uh, organizations have stepped up, and they want to help me raise awareness. And uh, if we do that, uh, we might stop some of these people from dying. Yeah, I'm sure there's been many people probably have come up to you and thank you already because because of what you've talked about, what you've gotten out there to everybody that. Hey, because of what you've said and what you're trying to do, that I did get checked up, and now I'm in, in a better position to make sure I, I'm around for quite a while. Yeah, you know, I, you know what's funny is that I, I I'm so fortunate uh, because I I wasn't supposed to be here today. I wasn't supposed to be alive. But um, I think my friend upstairs is uh, giving me some more time to do some continue to do some of his work. So. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and help as many people as I can around the country. It's great to see you throwing out that ceremonial first pitch with Clyde. I know, uh, especially knowing the both of you, you'd rather be on a golf course <laughs> teeing it up than throwing out a ceremonial first pitch. Yeah, he, he told me not to bounce it, and I, and I did, but he made a good play. So um, not bad at all. Yeah, it's a good movement on the ball. That's the most important thing. You would have got a ground ball out. Well, the uh, just like you used to do, throwing those hard sliders, trying to break somebody's bat. I was always trying to be nice to you. Hey, Gooby <laughs> says that the scouting report on you was always just throw it down the middle, let him get himself out. Because you well, hit everything else. Well, you know, it's funny. I played a game against uh, the Texas Rangers, and uh, Sunberg was the catcher. And the manager stood on top of home plate and told him, let him know every pitch that's coming. And I backed out the batter's box. <laughs> And he's, I says, are you serious? He says, yep. Fastball right there, right down the middle. And I took it. Base it out to center field, being waved around as Dozier. No play to play the Twins and tied the score up and won. And I took the fastball. And then the second pitch, he said, fastball away. And I says, base it to left field. Yeah. <laughs> the one down the middle I didn't trust, but the one in the outside part of the plate, you know, was good, but um, that I think a lot of people think that's that was the the book on me. If you throw it in or away or up, and that um, I'm gonna, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to put the put the ball in play. But they're trying to surprise me by throwing everything down. The middle. <laughs> Can you imagine as a, as a rookie? I'm, I'm in there, just, and here you are. I'm going to be facing you, and I'm like, throw the ball down the middle, like. Aren't we not supposed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to put uh, it somewhere else besides right down the middle right. of the plate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Boxing up with two outs and a man at first. Rob, before we let you go, I just uh, I imagine it, it's tough for you to parcel your time out between these two organizations that have been a, a big part of your life, uh, both professionally on and off the field for you. Well, you know, they both have taken very good care of me. Um, they've done everything that I've asked them to do. So uh, I'm only obliged to being here and doing things for the Angels and also going back to Minneapolis and doing things for the Twins. You look and sound fantastic. Thank and, you. I uh, hope everything works out for you come August. Thanks very much. Great Thanks, Thank you. Thank Hall you. of Famer Rod Carew. Tie game 1-1 one, one as we hit the bottom of the second.
at one. Of course, there was a play in the second inning, the top of the inning, that uh, helped the Minnesota Twins a little bit, and that was that ground ball right to Johnny Givatella that uh, at least you could have gotten the lead runner on. And that's what you're always trying to do. At that point, that's good base running by Dozier to stop and force him to come at him. But just get that lead runner at second. I, I saw Rod Carew's eyes as he's looking in because he's he loves the game of baseball. He knows exactly where everyone should be. And his eyes right there, you see a focus out there. Get that lead runner. Even if you don't get a double play, you at least have that man at first base a more difficult time to score him from first base as compared to second. It's those little things that we were just talking about as Mark Table single to lead off the bottom of the second. Those little things come back to haunt. And with Giovatella coming to the plate, now it's time for Lowe's home field advantage. And what Johnny G has done at the Big A of late career high four hits last night, last 20 home games. 333 batting average, 25 for 75 with 13 runs scored in the 11 ribeye. By the way, Marte seems to hit everything right on the barrel of the bat. Another base hit for Marte. Fastball missing low. Giovatello with a four hit game last night, raising his average to 269. 12 doubles, three home runs, 19 runs batted in. Single by Marte, the fourth hit allowed by Santana. Two balls, no strikes. Santana coming off a loss against the Marlins. Last start, that was on the ninth. Give up five runs on nine hits. Matter of fact, he's given up five runs at back-to-back -back starts, both losses to both Florida teams, the Rays prior to the Marlins. He's really struggled. I mentioned that last four starts in the array for him with his stuff, well over seven. Johnny shoots one down the left field lot and into the corner, and this one is... Gone, a big fly for Johnny Giovatella. Sneaks that one out, a two-run shot, and the Angels retake the lead, three to one. We're talking about that four-hit performance last night for Johnny Giovatella. Follows it up with a very impressive swing here. It's a 92-mile-an-hour fastball inside, and he brings his hands in very, very well. Take a look at that swing once again, and that's. The AT&T high-speed replay. That fastball's running off the plate. How quick he was to bring his hands inside to get the barrel of the bat, just get it over that short wall in left field for Giovatella. No wall scraper for Johnny Giovatella. Number four, now with 21 RBIs, base is clear. Carlos Perez lifts one out to left. Grossman moving back on it. And just shot of the track will pull up, make the catch for the first out. Well, like we talked about with Irvin, he said it's part of his game, the home run ball. Two run home run for G. Patel. Two straight home runs and two straight plate appearances for Johnny G. Ninth home run that Irvin has allowed this year. Phil Hughes, the team leader, who's on the DL. He has 11. By the way, the double by Trout against Santana is 2,000 career hit he has allowed. Also tells you you've been around for quite a while to be yeah. able to give up that many hits. Petit, the shortstop, hitting 277. Home run at 10 RBIs. Gregorio last night, one for two with a single and a sack fly.
Pretty good slider from Santana, one and two. Ground ball right side, and that will sneak through for a base hit. Pretty good two-strike approach. And that's a third hit allowed by Santana here in the second. And now it's time for In the Driver's Seat, brought to you by Kia with Rock Carew. Big night for him tonight. What he had accomplished as a major league hitter. Most batting titles in major league history. Ty Cobb at the top. Bonus Swagger and Tony Gwynn with eight batting titles. Rod Carew, Rogers Hornsby, Stan Musial. You talk about some incredible names on that list. Rod Carew, one of the all-time great hitters. That's still one of the funniest things, though. Scouting report, throw it down the middle. He might hit a line drive at somebody. I said, that's fine as long as it's not back at me. <laughs> Uh, Paul Molitor had that one. Yeah, down. yeah. Thanks for remembering that. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. You still got the out, though. Yeah, I did. Help my feeling. The one percentage. three put out. Yes, it is. And you got knocked out. And I got a nice little dent in my leg still. Yeah. It's, it's comfortable. Dude, you should go down there and ask him to autograph that <laughs> thing. <laughs> He's sweet. He's HOF. Yes. <laughs> he came up in the Metrodome up, and they were taking x rays, and, uh, you know, there was obviously something going on there, right. and my leg wasn't real good. And he said, hey, man, I'm sorry. Is it. Hey, I would have gladly gave you because he was running out towards 3,000 hits. He was real close. I'm like, I would have gladly let that one go through. <laughs> he didn't have to go through me. But, hey, I got it out. You really should get a signature and then take it to a tattoo artist and have a tattoo right where that dent is at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let me hey, check that. this out. Yeah. I can't hey, even kids, touch look it. Look at this. Oh, favor. It still hurts when I touch it. Oh. <laughs> Three balls and a strike. Escobar with a single in the first. I'm really glad you brought it up, though. Thanks, man. I'm here for you, bro. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> Chopper toward short. Nunez to Dozier on the first. Double blow. That's a quick turn by Dozier. And that'll do it for the Angels here in the second. But John Ezevatella puts the Angels back on top. His fourth home run of the season. A two-run shot. Still impressive how quick he brought his hands inside to be able to get the barrel left baseball to hit it out. Two-run home run, Johnny G. Hey, Angels up 3-1, top of the third inning. Stay tuned later tonight at the postgame show for the business of sports. Brought to you by AutoNation.com and powered by Ford Tustin. Getting ready for the Flow Rider concert. Yes. Johnny Givatello is ready to roll. 
Top of the order. It's still amazing how he hit that ball out. That yeah. fastball was off the plate in at 92. How quick his hands were to be able to get the barrel of the bat on that baseball. Nunez shoots one out to right field. Cole comes in, puts it away for the first down. Boy, he can hit that baseball away so well. And this is, a, again, this is a fastball running in. Brought his hands inside. His elbow was on his hip area. To be able to get the barrel of the bat. You talk about bringing your hands in. Look how he's able to bring his hands in to be able to get the barrel of the bat to create leverage to hit that one out to left field. That ball might hit him in the chest yes. if he doesn't hit it. This one back up the middle, and Grossman has himself a single. When you're on the mound and you you get a hitter to swing at that pitch, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. And then all of a sudden you look up and it's a two-run home run. Grossman on board with one out, and here's Mauer. Two out single in the first inning. Down low. Well, we talk about Mauer, how he inside outs the baseball so well. How many of his hits are to left field? 30 of them, 24 to center, just 11 to right. But then you look at the power swing. Five home runs the opposite direction for Joe Mauer just one to center and one he's turned on to hit the right field. Again, and all those pitches he's driving the other way are inside pitches going inside out. He's had a tough time with pitches away. Certainly not on pitches in. 378 batting average on pitches in, and that's what he's been able to do, go the other way with. Three oh count by Shasin. No strikeouts, no walks, four hits allowed. Three and one. Grossman over two and stolen bases this season with Minnesota. Nice find for Minnesota. Think of good numbers for him. Came in batting 325. Certainly has hit the ball well in this series so far. He's got five home runs already on the season. His career high is six. Now one is a strike. Now I thought it was going to be ball four. Reached down to unbuckle the uh, the shin guard. That's one of those pitches, though, if you're the Minnesota Twins, the organization, a fastball in on a 3-1 count, you wanted to do some damage to that pitch. He does have a very good eye, but that's the pitch you would think that he can hit hard. Runner goes, Mauer bounces it foul. Grossman will head back to first base. Halos with a run of the first. Minnesota tied it in the second. Angels retaking the lead on the Giovatella home run. Mauer bounces this one to Crone. His only plays at first. Two down. Grossman ends up in scoring position. That pitch down and in again. Three straight, one a fastball, two breaking balls, same plane. Because it was coming in at 79 miles an hour, it's very difficult to go inside out on that pitch. The fastball, yes. Curveball, no. That's why he gets the ground ball out, the rollover ground ball out. CJ Crone.
backup breaking ball in for a strike. Plouffe popped out to end the first of one. First round pick of the Twins at 04 at a crispy Carmelot High School. Foul back. 0 oh, 2. Was it Chris McGee went to school? Yes. Geeter. Good old Geeter. And Plouffe was a very good pitcher himself. 90, 93 range, nasty slider. Speaking of Geeter, I don't know why guy watches our games all the time. I know he's busy doing stuff on another network for a basketball team. But especially when we were in Pittsburgh, I thought he was a huge fan of the Pirates. Yeah, he's always said that. We talked about how great that ballpark was. Yeah. Never heard from him. Must have been on vacation. Here's the 2 This one lined out to left field. It's going to get down for a hit. Grossman is going to be waved in. The throw for Marte sails wide. And the Twins get a run back. It is 3-2 to two as Plouffe ends up at second base after picking up his 20th run batted in. Off-speed pitch. Slider. Went out and got it. It's one of those difficult plays for Marte, especially you know, playing that first start in left field to come in, that, that throw is going to have sail away from him up the third baseline. It's going to be very difficult to throw at Grossman. You're better off almost getting to the cutoff man at that point and keep Plouffe at first base. In that experience, he'll gain some. He'll get more playing time out in left field. Dozier will look at the strike. He had a single to lead off the second, also scored a run. That's Plouffe's eighth RBI this season against the Angels. Ten for 18. Just off the plate. Now it caught the corner. One or two. <laughs> Off the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Good pitch right there, though. Even though it's a little bit off the outside corner, it does set up the slider away now. Because as a hitter, you're thinking that was real close. So a borderline pitch may go to the pitchers this time around if you hit that same spot. Good lead for Plouffe at second. As Dozier strikes out, swinging the inning comes to an end. The Twins get one run back. We're to the bottom of the third. Halo's up 3-2.
York Oakmont Country Club. Actually, it's just two days. The 116th U.S. Open Championship. Live coverage begins Thursday on FS1 at 7 a.m. Pacific. It continues through the final round Sunday on Fox. Or you can watch it all live on Fox Sports Go. 7 a.m. on FS1, Thursday, round one. Practice rounds continuing tomorrow. Tomorrow. I was watching that all day today. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I lost track of days. I was ready. They keep showing the uh, tee times. Listen to Roy McElroy today. I thought they were going off tomorrow. Nope. Just practice rounds. Practice rounds. Alan Iverson would be real happy with that practice. practice. He loves practice. <laughs> Cole fouls off the first pitch. Calhoun trying to pull holes here in the third. Cole a fly ball to left field in his first inning at bat. And that is skied out to deep right field. Kepler is back at the wall. That is gone. Big fly for Cole Calhoun, his eighth of the season. Second tonight given up by Santana. It's four to two Angels. Playing off speed pitch, elevated. And Cole Calhoun with a cow boom at the right field. Come right back and get that run back. Change up, stays upstairs. And Cole drives it out to right field. Cole's seen three pitches tonight. Fly ball to left, a foul ball, and now home run. That's normal. He likes to swing the bat early. A lot of success on that first or second pitch. Oh, fastball up and in on Trout. Third home run of the season for Cole Calhoun here at the Big A. Trout with a double off the wall in right center. His first that's, time up. That's a good swing there from Trout. Inner half of the plate at 94. Foul it straight back. A little angry swing. Yes. One of those ones where we've seen with Albert Pools when you throw a fastball up and in. It's never a good thing that next pitch after it. Back inside. I'm surprised there wasn't many more fastballs thrown inside considering where Trout was hit the day before. A lot of times that's what you're going to do as a pitcher. Throw the fastball back inside again. That was well off the inside corner. Breaking pitch rolled over to third. Poof has it. One down. Fans, this broadcast of Angels baseball is being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving around the world on land and on ships at sea we welcome you to our broadcast and as always we thank you for your continued service one out nobody on and here comes albert albert an rbi single in the first inning picking up his 42nd run batted in That's a foul ball back off of Centeno, the catcher. No balls and a strike. Albert drives one out to center field. Buxton moving back on to track it down. 
two down. Well struck by Albert. Nothing to show for. Here comes CJ Crone is 0 for 1. Strike went around on the breaking ball. Four two handles here in the third. Another slider. This one missed two balls and a strike. Two one. Missed it. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, Urban liked that and wanted that fastball, but it looked like it was just off the inside part of the plate against CJ Crone. So he has some good velocity once again. Now at 95. Fastball ripped right to second. Dozier has it. And it comes to an ab. But Cole Calhoun would lead off blast his eighth of the season. Gets the Angels back to a two run lead. Was able to get the barrel of the bat on that change up upstairs and hits it out to right center field. the fourth inning. This is one way to get ready for a flow right yes. concert post game. That's fantastic. Oh. Cole Calhoun. They're breaking it down right there. Home run. Eighth of the year leading off the bottom of the third. Just seen back to work. Osvaldo Arcia lead things off. He's a DH. Max Kepler to follow. Then Juan Centeno. The Twins half of the fourth inning. Two balls, one strike.
Two one. Good curveball there. What you seem to get back even up the count. We'll throw his curveball a little bit more so against left-handed batters. Slider to right-handed batters. We'll throw a slider down and in against the lefty to try to get a swing and miss. We tried to sneak that two-seamer front door. Full count. Archie had a fly ball to left field in the second, so he's 0 for 1. Four full cows for Shasin. Breaking pitch popped up. Gregoria Petit. The shortstop calling for it. One down. I host a business function to celebrate a special occasion in your own private suite here at the Big A. Sweet rentals offer all-inclusive food and beverage packages. Visit angels.com slash sweets for more information. Breaking ball kind of slipped out of the hand. That's one ball, no strikes. Kepler, the right fielder. 0 for 1 as he grounded out to Giovatello in the second. On the corner. Two balls, two strikes. Minnesota with five hits. The Angels with seven. Two home runs for the Halos. That is out toward right center. Not very deep. Trout and Calhoun both racing in. Cole will make the catch for round number two. The two home runs allowed by Minnesota tonight. Given up 90 on the season. These two teams came in tied as far as home runs allowed with 88. Bottom line is the pitcher, when you get a hitter, the reach out and out in front like that, you've made a quality pitch and gets it out with that fly ball in the shallow right center field. Juan Centeno, an RBI single in the second. He's one for one. Todd is a minor league free agent this past offseason. The Brewer system last year. 26 year old native of Puerto Rico. Originally in the Mets system. 32nd round pick back in 07. He's played in 15 games, now 16 games for Minnesota this year. Two one. Chopper off the plate. A one two three inning for Jolie Shasin. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Halo's up four two.
Sports West is brought to you by Subaru, making the world a better place. That's why they created Subaru Loves to Care, Subaru's commitment to a healthier community. By El Pollo Loco, try the new Fire Grilled Chicken Burritos today. And by Infinity, visit your local Southern California Infinity retailer for a test drive today. Halo's hot top 4-2, bottom of the fourth inning. Marte, Giovatello, and Perez to face Irvin Santana, who has uh, allowed seven hits, two of which are home runs. Nothing easy for him, although after he gave up the homer to Calhoun in the third, retired the next three in a row. Marte getting his first big league start in left field. Had a single to lead off the second and scored in the Giotella home run. One ball, one strike. The slider's got a good bite tonight. I don't know why Irvin has fallen in love with his fastball so much. He's trying to run the fastball inside. He's made some mistakes with it. This one flared out to right center field. Marte will pick up his second hit. Sounded like he cracked his bat. That's a pretty good pitch, too, off the plate. Speaking of good swings, Johnny Giovatello back in the second inning. Santana tries to run a fastball in. He brings his hands inside and gets the barrel of the bat. And it's certainly worthy of a Carl's Cam replay how he brought his hands in and got the barrel of the bat on that baseball to hit it out to left field. Two consecutive home runs in the bats. His last at bat last night. In his first at bat here tonight for Giovatello leaving the yard. Fastball on the inside part of the plate for a strike. Giovatello looking for the natural hat trick. Three home runs in a row potentially. A little flare and this one goes foul. No balls, two strikes. Ground ball toward third. Plouf will feed Dozier for one. The relay back to first. Double play. Second one turned by the Twins tonight. Boy, Dozier is really quick turning to double play. Drafted as a shortstop. Great hands in that second base position. Plouf with a perfect feed to Dozier to complete a 5-4-3 double play. It's near perfect. The athletic position to throw. Read that letter hide and the quick turn by Dozier. How quick his hands are on that transfer to be able to complete a 5 4 3 double play. Carlos Perez, a fly ball to left in his first at bat. Two balls, one strike. This one's out toward left field. Grossman toward the corner will curl around on the track, make the catch. For the third out. Halos and John here, the fourth. We hit of the fifth. Still 4 2 Halos.
It's uh, part of a uh, world record attempt yet again here at Angel Stadium. Most umbrellas opened in a confined space, I'm being told. Who knew? Thinking about Gene Kelly starting singing. Wow, they're flashing the signs. So I guess we got it. Oh, hey, congrats, Gooby. Just another record. Another one. Another plaque on the wall for us. Oh, feels fantastic. Yep. Well, we got to break out a little Gene Kelly singing in the rain. Maybe not. Why not? <laughs> Sing a little bit. Oh, yes, that would work out well. Push bottom of the first base side. Shasin barehands it, throws it over the curve, barehands it for the out. Gloves not included on this play. Shasin with the bare hand, Crone with the bare hand, and the out. Well, the old saying, Phil Collins said, no jacket required album. Well, this is no gloves required on this play. So one out. There's Nunez. The shortstop's 0 for 2. A couple of fly balls to right field. Pretty good fastball there with movement. Lower part of the strike zone. 65 pitches for Shasin. 42 have been strikes. Got two right-handed starters on the mound tonight. That, uh, do not waste a whole lot of time. Well, that went right off of. Carlos Perez. Talked with Giovanni Soto today and asked him how he's progressing. He said he's feeling much better. Coming along. With that shoulder throwing arm. There's padding there, but there's a separation in the padding. It's right on the shoulder. Yeah, well, like he, he should, went. Looked like he did. Yes, he did. Gets punched out. Nunez is out number two. Second strikeout for Shasid. Good game box score for the Minnesota Twins. Total of five hits tonight. It's kind of been spread out by Shasid. Grossman has one of those hits. One for two, singled and scored in the third. This one pulled toward first, and that's a fair ball off the glove of Crone. Grossman will easily get to second base. He'll stop right there with a two out double. First extra base hit. For Minnesota. And one thing the Twins have been pretty good so far in this game is with the man in scoring position, they've gotten some hits. Hits off the glove and down the line. Here's Maurer. Snap throw to second base and a back pick and good throw by Carlos but the hand gets back in there. If you're trying to keep the tag applied just in case there's any separation between the hand and the base at the second.
Oh, that's a pretty good pitch once again. Oh, cut fastball. Lower part of the strike zone, middle part of the plate. Two balls, no strikes on Maurer. He's one for two. Jacin just playing catch with Petit. Keeping the arm loose. Two runs, six hits, three left on for the Twins. Four runs, eight hits, one left on for the Angels. What a dangerous hitter like Maurer at the plate. You're looking back to see if you can get out of the inning without, without throwing a pitch to Maurer because you know he's going to put it in play. This one's out to left field. Marte came in, gets turned around, and that will fall in there. Grossman coming in to score. Maurer will turn and head to third. He's going to try for a triple, and he is in there safely. It's four to three Angels. Second triple of the season for Maurer. In this pitch, inside part of the plate. Talked about how well he goes inside out. Goes to left field and Marte going the wrong way and over his head. And not a lot of experience at all for Marte out in left field. And about an inning or so last night and here's first career start in left field. And especially off the left handed bat it's going to go away from me as a left fielder. That's the toughest play especially when you don't have any experience out there. Ball seemed to have a little more carry than you would think it would. On a breaking ball that sliced. This one's out to center. Not very deep. Here comes Trout. He'll make the catch. As Kloof is retired with Maurer stranded at third. Twins get a run. It's 4 3 Angels as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Eight total hits, two home runs. Johnny Giovatella, Cole Calhoun, Marte with a couple of hits tonight. The only starters without a hit: C.J. Crone, Carlos Perez. We begin the bottom of the fifth inning. Nine, one, and two coming up. Petit, Escobar, and Calhoun to face Irvin Santana. Petit last time up, a real good piece of hitting, going the other way behind in the count. Ground ball in the hole between first and second. The team shoots it out to the alley and right center field. Kepler's not going to get there. A one hop offense. Petit hustling towards second. Good throw from Buxton. And Petit is safe with a double. What Tenth a double of the season. Second hit for Petit. What an arm Buxton has. An accurate throwing arm also. Threw out. Base runner at the plate being Mike Trout. That a perfect throw to second base. But a nice piece of hitting once again for Petit going the other way. 92 mile an hour fastball. Didn't try to pull it. One hops the wall. The Bucks have got himself in very good throwing position. Throws, throws a laser to second base. 
He beats it out, 10th double of the season. So far, the uh, couple of times the Twins have scored, the Angels have answered right back as Escobar takes a strike on the breaking ball. See if they could do that here in the fifth. Tell you what, if Buxton becomes more consistent at the plate, he's a superstar in the making for Minnesota. Great speed. Can steal bases. You can see that arm strength he has and the coverage he has out in center field. Just needs to be more consistent swinging the bat. Ball and a strike on Yunel, who's one for two, singled in the first and a double play ball in the second. Out toward right. Kepler was playing deep. He'll make the catch. Tagging and heading to third is Petit. Hey, the baseball seem to be carrying yeah. really well here tonight. So Cole bad with the man at third base. One out. Twins are going to move their infield in. Cole one for two. Home run in the third inning is eighth. You know he'll be aggressive on that first pitch. A Hyundai key for this game tonight for the Angels to be successful. Right round. We've seen some really good swing getting the barrel of the bat on that round baseball. For the Angels tonight, nine hits, a couple home runs, a couple of doubles. One ball with strike going back to the breaking ball. Trout on deck. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Cole bounces this one, and that is past Mallard to fair ball. Petit scores. Cole on his way to second. The Angels get that run back. It is 5-3. We mentioned that a couple seconds ago, Victor. The Angels have responded right back every time Minnesota has scored a run. It's a big run right there. Picked up by Cole Calhoun with a double. 12th double. Fastball inner half of the plate. He's got the top side of that baseball, but enough on it to get it by Maurer because he's playing in, trying to prevent the run from scoring. Last 19 games for Cole Calhoun, 16 RBI. Tonkin, first man up for Minnesota. No balls, two strikes. Right Trout behind in the count here, 0 2. Still very good when he's in that position. 314 batting average, and he's behind in the count. Got a double and a ground out. <laughs> down the line, Kepler moving over. Two down. Ten 
Ken has thrown a lot of hard fastballs up and in towards Trout. His first at bat was a fastball middle down, and he doubled to the wall in right center field. Fastball on the inside part of the play for a strike. Pools one for two. 42nd RBI back at the first. 5 3 Angels here in the bottom of the fifth. So 10 of 66 pitches, 44 strikes, no strikeouts, no walks, 10 hits allowed. Cal remains at 0 2. Tried to back up that slider a lot so far in the scheme of the fastball inside. See if he tries to go back inside against Albert. Back to slider. Two balls, two strikes. Speed. So a full count. Tykins ready to go if Molitor needs him. Here's a 3 2. Albert strikes out, swinging on the breaking ball. And he comes to an end, but the Angels do get that run back. Five complete halos on top, 5 3.
coverage of baseball. Big games here tonight. Baltimore with a win over Boston. Lead the Red Sox in that AL East. The Cubbies come back in the ninth. Beat Washington 4-3. Houston beats St. Louis in interleague play. Now a game break up in Oakland with 2-1. Robinson Chirinos turns on a pitch inside part of the plate for a three-run home run for Texas. They lead that game 7-1 in the fifth inning up in Oakland where we'll be this weekend. Handles up 5-3 here in the sixth inning. Jolie Chassin back out on the mound. He'll face Dozier, Arcia, and Kepler. Twins half the sixth inning. Two strikeouts, no walks for Jolice. Bouncer foul. The Angels have action in their bullpen. Moving quickly, it looks like. 76 pitches for Chassin. Dozier a single with a run score in the second, the strikeout in the third. It's a pretty good pitch there also. Shasheen thought he threw that ball right in the strike zone. Curveball. Three one pitch fouled off full count. The thing about Dozier, he has got pretty good power when you go fastball up and in. Kind of similar as far as home run power to Ian Kinsler on the inner half of the plate elevated. The Dozier, the right hander, Alvarez, the lefty. Late on that one. Count remains full. Full count. The wonderful trust that slider he has to get a swing and miss, especially with the fastball away. Chances are he's going to be swinging. If it's close enough, you go down and away, get his potential swing and miss. And he walked him. Leadoff man on board to start the sixth inning. And this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Los Angeles Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. Mike Sosha may be indeed going to the bullpen. It looks like he is going to work his way out there now. With Arcia coming to the plate, Mike Sosha is going to match up here in the sixth inning. Bring on Jose Alvarez. She seemed uh, just a little frustrated coming out of this game with a two run lead and trusting it to the bullpen. So Jose Alvarez on a relief for pitching change in the sixth inning. 5 3 Halos.
This telecast of Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is brought to you by Energy Upgrade California. It's easy to stay golden at energyupgradeca.org. By your Southern California Toyota dealers. And by USAA, insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. 5-3 Angels here in the top of the sixth inning. Shasin walking Dozier to lead off this sixth. And Mike Sosha goes to the bullpen. Jose Alvarez called upon. Shasin throws 81 pitches. It's our in and out. Who's in? Who's out? Osvaldo Arcia at the plate. First pitch is in there for a strike. Alvarez pitching at his 32nd game. 1-2 and two record, a 4.83 ERA. He has fared better against left-handed batters. Just a 246 average batting average against by the lefties. 359 by righties. Up and in. Evens a count at one ball, one strike. You got two lefties here, and Arcia and Kepler, back to back. Actually, three with Sentinel, the catcher, also left-handed bat. Dozier over at first. Two on count. Breaking ball drops in there. Two balls, two strikes. Got him on the off-speed pitch. One away. Yeah, real good slider right there from Alvarez. If they're establishing, he can throw that for a strike. Expanded the zone, 79 mile an hour slider. And a huge out here, going down and away against Arcia. Kepler, the right fielder. Hits one and Crone dives, makes the catch, fires the second for one. No relay by Petit, but they get the lead runner for the second out. Nice play by C.J. Crone. Yeah, showing some good range here by C.J. Crone. Well hit baseball. Off the base, good prep step to be able to make that play and then a good firm throw. See what Dozier was trying to do, running that inside part to make it a more difficult throw for the right-handed throwing C.J. Crone to second base. He went initially up the dirt and then going towards that grass area to make it a difficult throw. What they're looking at here, the foot was on the bag as Petit caught the baseball. So two outs and a man at first. Juan Centeno coming up. Jensen on RBI single in the second, a ground down in the fourth. Gene and Giovanni Soto. Yeah. Little flare out the right field. It's a base hit. Kepler will stop at second. Mike like Social will go to the bullpen now. With Buxton coming to the plate. Bedrosian's ready to go. And Campbell coming to this ball game with two outs. And a couple of men on. 5-3 Angels. We're in the sixth inning. Second pitching change in the frame.
We're in the sixth inning with two outs and a couple of men on for Minnesota. Hey, folks, I want to remind you that the Angels and Twins wrap up this three-game set tomorrow night at 7.05. Fans in attendance will receive a canvas beach backpack courtesy of Chevron Extra Mile. While supplies last, visit angels.com slash promotions to get your tickets today. Can't wait. Cambodrosia not in relief. Takes over with Kepler standing at second. Sentinel at first. He'll face Byron Buxett. Cam's pitched in 25 games, 1 0 record, and a 1.64 ERA. Buxton very aggressive at the plate, also. Be careful that first pitch. You got to hit a spot well if you're Cam Pedrosian against Buxton. Bucks it over two. He drives this one to the alley in left center field. And that'll score one run. Kepler will score. Sentinel on his way to third. Bucks it on his way to second. It's an RBI double. And it is five to four. And the issues that Cam Bedrosian has had this year with inherited runners. Still an issue tonight. And yeah, that break of ball is right down the heart of the plate. Buxton. <laughs> The barrel of the bat, you can see that speed he has. Bucks it with a sixth double, seventh run batted in. Now second and third. One run lead down. And Nunez at the plate. He's open three. Two balls, no strikes. Entering tonight, Cam had inherited 25 base runners, 13 had scored. Allows one here, just trying to get his third out, keep it a one run lead. Nunez ahead of the count of two balls, no strikes. Sentinel at third, Buxton at second, 2 0. That's a chopper left side, Petit. Two hops has it, gets rid of it quickly, and they get the third out. One run in for Minnesota, and the Angels still lead it. And the Angels lead this one by the four. An all-new Gooby Tuesdays coming up next inning.
the people, the weather. There's no rain outs, by the way. It seems like you get into that environment, it's so beautiful out there, and uh, you got the background and, and the city skyline, and of course the food, Gooby. Outside of Angel Stadium, I would say it would be Target Field in Minneapolis. I think uh, that is a hidden gem in many ways. What is your favorite ballpark? Uh, favorite ballpark is Wrigley Field, has always been. I'll tell you, Mark Langston had a great story about that, getting a chance to go to Wrigley Field as a pitcher. And Billy Connors, his pitching coach, brought him out the night before just to get acclimated to that mound at Wrigley Field. And he said it was one of the greatest thrills ever going the night before and then going to the mound that very next day. So Langer loving Wrigley Field. Here's Mark Langston, Terry Smith. Happy birthday to Terry Smith. And he's got a birthday card. Fantastic. <laughs> I said 29 again. He goes, no, I'm 31. <laughs> awesome. Two great guys right there in that radio booth for our Angels. Harry Smith, the birthday boy. Michael Tonkin takes over on the mound for Minnesota. Herbert said Tiana Dunn after five innings. CJ Crone takes down low for ball one. Tonkin pitching in his 29th game. 2-2 two two mark, a 3-3 ADRA. 38 strikeouts, nine walks, and 32 innings of work. Native of Palmdale. One ball, one strike. Talking a 30th round pick at 08 by the Twins. Now 26 years of age. Facing Crone, who's 0 for 2. Running that fastball up. It's 1 and 2. Crone did uh, line out sharply, but right to Dozier and the third inning. Tonkin, the uh, brother in law of former Twins outfielder Jason Kubel, also a Palmdale resident. On two foul back. Yeah, good fastball from Tonkin. 92 to 96 range. Slider. Occasional changeup. Marte on deck, then Giovatello. Slider overthrown. Two balls, two strikes. Irvin giving up five runs all earned. Ten hits, two home runs, one strikeout, no walks. His five innings of work. Shasin went five innings, plus a batter. He gets charged with all four runs, all four earned. Seven hits, two strikeouts, and a walk. And the thing with, with Irvin Santana, with the, the numbers for right-handed batters against him this year, coming in 318, eight hits, my right handed batters against him tonight again. Three two. Crone works the walk to lead off the sixth inning. Today marks the U.S. Army's 241st birthday. USA honors those who have served the U.S. Army and all of our service members around the world. Jeffrey Marte with a couple of singles, one run scored. Slider, first strike. Solid game so far for Marte. A couple hits. Batting average down the season, 342. Nineteen hits combined tonight between these two teams. Just one, one, two, three inning. That was Shasin who retired the side in order of the fourth.
One and two. Pretty good spot to do some damage. The Marte, 94 mile an hour fastball, though, inner half of the plate. That's the spot where he can drive it. Drive it into the gap. Getting to start today in left field. First big league start there. Slatter away. Two balls, two strikes. Mentioned earlier in the broadcast that Daniel Nava on the rehab assignment played seven innings in left field for the Bees. He was going two for four. Nava's on his second stint on the disabled list. Two two. Crone takes off. Marte shoots one out to right. Kepler back a couple of steps. Crone. Touch second base for some reason. The throw is in time. It's a double play. Yeah, there was no reason for CJ Crone. He hadn't got back, gotten to the base in second, stopping and then go back right away. Said he went back and touched the base. It cost him a couple steps going back. He's going on the pitch trying to track the baseball. And then goes to the base. Kepler with his strong throwing arm. Right on the money at first base to double him up. He's running with his head down as if it's a straight steal with the two two count. Don't you got to peek in, find the baseball? So two outs, base is clear. And here's Johnny Givatella. This one line back up the middle, almost got Tonkin. And Johnny with his second hit of the night. By the way, that's a pretty good throwing arm in right field. Yeah, like it's Kepler. Both of them. When you think about Buxton in center. Went line right back up the middle. Tried to get his glove there in time. Tonkin to be able to knock that one down. But Giovatella, another hit. His sixth hit in this series. Seven hits in his last eight at bats. He had come into this series struggling mightily. Three for his last 30. Carlos Perez up. 0 for 2, a couple of fly balls to left. Mike Moore getting ready. Givatella takes off to throw down by Centro. One hopper and safe at second base. Looks like he got his hand in there. Third stolen base of the season in five attempts. To the hand just in there before the tag is applied by Dozier. Another angle. Hand on the base before the tag is applied. Well, fortunately enough, they didn't keep that tag on him. Otherwise, he would have been out as his foot and hand off the base and follow through on the slide. Run out there for Carlos Perez and the Angels. Carlos is good as far as driving in runs. It's up the middle to right center field. Yowza. Three balls, one strike.
especially when you're looking away because you're seeing a lot of sliders from him and fastballs away to run a fastball up and in very difficult to get out of the way that one fortunately enough for Carlos Perez he did get out of the way. He's yet to show any consistency throwing the slider for a strike. He's kind of over kind of around it and yep. overthrowing it. So you just center on a fastball now. This is lined towards short. Nunez has it. The inning comes to an end. No runs, a hit, one left on. We head to the seventh. The Angels up five to four. As we begin the seventh here at the Big Eight, game two of his three game set, I want to remind you that Christmas in June celebration is coming up Friday, June 24th. Angels take it on the Oakland Athletics. Fans in attendance will receive an exclusive ugly sweater baseball cap courtesy of Arco. Visit angels.com slash promotions to get your tickets today. He looks really good, don't yeah. you think? Like you're getting mad at me because I'm calling it an ugly sweater. It's not ugly. Hat. It's fantastic. Hey man, I'm just pulling my best Ron Burgundy here. I just read yeah. what's given to me. Yes. Hey, right. Well, you're giving an effort, though. Oh. That's all that matters. It's a fantastic hat. It is a fantastic hat. Shane Robinson takes over in left field for Jeffrey Marte. Mike Moore in the new arm. And here in the seventh, Warren will face two, three, and four. Grossman, Maurer, and Pluth. Justine worked five innings plus a batter. Alvarez, two-thirds of an inning, had one hit, one strikeout. Bedrosian, one-third of an inning, gave up a hit. For retiring Nunez. And now Mike Moore here in the seventh inning. Pitch Sunday. At two and a third at four strikeouts. To throwing 35 pitches. Grossman, the switch hitting left fielders, two for three with a single, a double, two runs scored. Two balls, no strikes. Three and oh. At this point in the game, you don't want to give base runners. See if we can get back in the count here for Mike Moore. <laughs> Fouled off to the right to the seats. Full count.
Three two. Foul back. Well, he stayed back on that changeup, but it was a mistake changeup right in the heart of the plate, and he had a pretty good swing at it. Ideally, you wanted that changeup to go running down and away. Joe Maurer on deck. Upstairs, and he walked him, a leadoff walk. Tying run on board to start the seventh. First baseman, number seven, Joe Two for three with a triple, single and an RBI. Two triples this year. He's got 26 of them in his career. Has rolled in the three double plays. And Mike Moore would love to get a ground ball at an infielder here for a double play. Bauer 0 for 2 in his career against Moore. It's a fastball, first strike. Petit shading Moore up the middle. Still on the shortstop side of second base. Robinson shallow and a little bit toward the foul line in left field. Wanted appeal, he did not go. Ball and a strike. Twins with nine hits, the Angels with 11. Lifts it in the air to left. Got that fastball in on the hands just enough. One away. Here comes Kloof. It's amazing that in inside out approach that he has right now. Now he can let that baseball travel in the inner half and still hit that ball hard the other way. And Kloof, who has been very good this season against the Angels. Eight RBI, two home run, a batting average over 500 this season. Decent lead for Grossman at first. They'll check in on him. Kloof tonight, one for three, had an RBI single in the third. Fastball upstairs. And one thing we've seen from Plouffe this season against the Angels, he's been good on mistake off-speed pitches on the inner half of the plate. Got to be careful in the inside part, see if he can keep it down and away. And that is hammered down the left field line, but it is hooking, and it goes foul. In one of those all speed pitches in her half of the plate, and he turned on it again. See where Carlos wanted that break of ball, ends up having to reach back, and it's down that middle part, middle in, and fortunately enough, hooked it foul. Foul back just below us. And Mike wants to try to throw that change up down. He's elevated. Lead off walk to Grossman, still at first. Two balls, two strikes.
Brian Dozier on deck. 2 2 now. Blue shoots one down the line, but slices foul. And sneak a fastball. Grossman heads back over to first. Jabbed. We ran that 91 mile an hour fastball in off the plate. Five four Halos, top of the seventh. Up in Oakland, Texas, leading the A seven four, the bottom of the seventh. Houston beat St. Louis 5 2. As this one's out towards center field. Trout moving back into his left is there. Two down. And the fly out on a changeup. A little bit of pitch by pitch sequence for Mike Moore against Trevor Plouffe, who's had success against the Angels this season. High fastball out of the strike zone. And a slider. Mike Moore got away with, pulled it foul. Changeup. Fouled that one back upstairs and went slider down and away. Fastball. Late on it, fastball up and in, fouled that one off. And then a changeup away, located well to get that fly ball out to center field. Dozier takes a strike. Second baseman, one for two with a single, a strikeout, and a walk. Even though Plouffe hit that one pretty well, very difficult to square up a changeup when it's away like that, especially after a fastball in the pitch before. You're more in protect mode to put the ball in play. Good pitch by Mike Morin. Dozier fouls this one back. Perez giving it a look, might have a play. He does, makes the catch, and the leadoff walk stranded. At first base, stretch time here at the Big A 5 4 Halos. Five to four. We mentioned that tomorrow night we will wrap up this three-game set against the Minnesota Twins. Take a look at the Honda upcoming probable. Tyler Duffy on the mound for Minnesota. Hector Santiago going for the Angels. That was pretty cool watching Charles Nagy and Mike Morin talk about when he's using those arms gestures that he was doing. He was talking about the differential between the swings on his fastball as compared to his changeup and slider. You see that much of a difference. That's when you get a hitter out in front like he was able to do 
on the changeup against Trevor Plouffe to get a fly out to the center field. Kevin Jepson take over on, takes over on the mound here at the bottom of the seventh inning. Former Angel pitching in his 28th game, two and five mark. 5.61 ERA, seven saves on the season. He has struggled with late. That's why the earned run average has skyrocketed for him. Pitching here in the seventh. The Angels up a run. The Angels setting up nine, one to two. Petit Escobar and Calhoun. Yeah, but Jepson fastball is 93 to 97. And a curveball and changeup. Fastball in for a strike. Petit the shortstop, two for two. Single and a double run scored. Jefferson takes over for Tonkin, who pitched a scoreless sixth inning. Issuing a walk, nothing more, and a hit, pardon me. Angels at Fernando Salas getting ready in their bullpen. One ball, two strikes. It's a good curveball from Jepson. He's got rid of throwing that cut fastball. I remember he was throwing that quite a bit when he's wearing the Angel uniform. He had a good fastball. 95 to 98 range, and then threw a lot of cut fastball, lost some velocity. He's going back to his fastball curveball combination. <laughs> Dropped his elbow, elevates a fastball, up and in on Petit. Two, two, called strike three. And there's the first out of the seventh. Angel fans of 2016 each year at MLB All-Star Game Ballot is here. Head to angels.com to choose your All-Star Game worthy stars and send them to the MLB All-Star Game presented by MasterCard on July 12th in San Diego. Vote today, vote tomorrow, vote at angels.com slash vote. Escobar one for three with a single and a run scored at the first inning. Back up the middle off the end of the bat Nunez not going to get there it's a single for Escobar. Get another multi hit game. Certainly has been a hit machine for the Angels this year. Now with 75 hits on the season. Right back up the middle. Even if Nunez gets to that baseball, he's going to be able to beat that one out. That's his 26th multi-hit game, tied for third in the American League in that category for you know Escobar. Those 75 hits leads the Angels. Trout just behind him. Cole two for three, a home run and an RBI double. Two runs batted in. Double is 12th, the home run is eighth. Start him off with a changeup. No, Nicole is very aggressive, especially first pitch fastball. Kevin joining the Twins last year in a trade from the Tampa Bay Rays. 
stepped in nicely to that closer role for them. Started off in that role this year. It has since been removed with the struggles that he's had. Change up, missing low. 3 0. Trout on deck. Cole's been pretty aggressive on that 3 0 green light count. I don't know if we'll be letting it go here. Especially with Mike Trout on deck. You may want to make sure if you're going to be swinging, it's got to be a pitch you can do some serious damage to it. Takes a fastball. It's a good take on that one. That's a fastball right towards the outside part of the plate. Full count. <laughs> if you know Oscar will be going here with one out on a three two count. Now does it go, and Cole works the walk. The two on, one out. Trout coming up. Seth to know how to talk to Joe with Jackson. Bottom line on that, pitch a 3-2 count just in case there's no contact made, no reason to go because Trout coming to plate. You know, Escobar's already in scoring position at first base the way Trout can drive the baseball. with 28 extra base hits this season. Mike tonight one for three with a double. Borderline pitch goes Trout's way and it's 1-0. Matching down that trout farm down in left field. You know, Trout could turn on the fastball in from Jepson. Two balls, no strikes. One run lead, looking for more to add some insurance. Escobar, the base runner at second, Calhoun at first. Off speed pitch misses in. Three balls in those strikes. As we mentioned, nobody warming up for Minnesota. Albert is up next. I'll take a shot at this if I'm Mike Trout on a 3 0 pitch. Green light special. See if you get a fastball. Does. Takes it. Three and one. Boy, the combination of those two pitches, an outside pitch and a high pitch, upper part of the strike zone, great numbers for Trout. Again, some hitters just aren't real comfortable swinging 3-0.
Three one now. And there's ball four. So they're loaded up. A single and back to back walks. Now they're coming to the plate. The pitching coach, interim pitching coach for the Minnesota Twins. A quick word with Kevin Jepson. And so often, when you have a visit from a pitching coach, the first pitch you'll see could be a fastball. Presley getting ready. Rasmussen, by the way, the uh, minor league pitching coordinator for the Twins, as you mentioned, taking over on an interim basis. Third. Three infielders on the left side. Bases loaded. And one out. First one. In there for a strike. And he came at him with a fastball. First pitch. Albert with 13 career grand slams. That field playing pretty deep, especially to center and right field. A base hit into those two spots should produce two runs although very good throwing arms for Buxton and Kepler we've seen tonight breaking pitch bounce toward third Bluth might come home bare hands it they do get the four shot the ball dropped they're calling it a transfer and if Bluth doesn't have an issue with that on the bare hand they might get two and the inning is over but they do get the out at the plate for the second out of the inning Coming in on the bare hand on this one. And lost control. A high throw. And on the transfer. See right there, he gets it on the palm of his hand. He's able to gather it against his body, but still get the force out at home plate. Certainly on the transfer, no doubt. The right call at the plate. Base is still loaded. Two outs now. Here's Crone. DJ 0 for 2 and a walk. Slider. He was made up his mind he was going to swing first pitch. And it's no balls and a strike. Good numbers with men in scoring position. If you're Cole Calhoun, you got to get ready just in case this, he's got to come back with another break ball, you would think. Try to see if CJ Crone would chase it. So if it's in the dirt, it's away at all at the plate. Try to score on a wild pitch. The only other thing I can think of is they try to run a fastball up around letter high. And they're swinging at those two sliders. Breaking ball, they chops it over to Plouffe. Made up a state pitch, too. They fired to Dozier. Pools. Forced out, the Angels waste a golden opportunity. Bases loaded, one out, get nothing out of it. We head to the eighth. Halo still up by a run.
4-4 lead, top of the eighth against the Twins. A Patrick O'Neill anxiously awaiting our Angels Live postgame show, brought to you by your SoCal Mazda dealers, joined by Jose Moda for some analysis, highlights, and Alex Curry with the interviews. Also awaiting the Flo Rida concert after the game. As a reporter, I think I should observe and report tomorrow. But let's get to our Arco top-tier play in the fifth inning, and it's Cole Calhoun who is doing the job here for the Angels. This is a double. It's going to score Petit. Also had that home run in the third. His eighth home run, his 12th double right there. As we send it inside to Victor and Mark. Guys, I'll see you inside for the concert. Thanks a lot, Patrick. Looking forward to it as we start the eighth inning. 5-4 Halos. Fernando Salas, 6 over on the mound. He's got Arcia, Kepler, and uh, Centeno. 6-7 and 8. Fernando pitched on Sunday. One inning against Cleveland. Gave up two runs on a home run. As Arcia fouls went back, and he had a big rip. Arcia, 0 for 3. He's the DH. Struck out his last time up. That was against Jose Alvarez. Salas has been very good against right-handed hitters. Okay against lefties. It's a 271 batting average against. That's muscling up on a changeup to force, make sure you don't make a mistake with it. He'll spike off speed pitch. One ball, one strike. Four runs, nine hits, seven left on for the Twins. Five runs, 12 hits. Six left on for the Angels. One ball, two strikes. And a much better change up there. And a good adjustment. Pitch before, overthrew it. That one, perfect. Down and away. Warren pitched a scoreless seventh inning. He swing a lead off walk and nothing more. Arcia goes down swinging. Perez will throw down to first to complete the strikeout. One down. Back to back to back off speed pitches. Sells against a guy that really is quick on a fastball. Kapler 0 for 3. The right fielder reached out a fielder's choice in the sixth inning and scored. As he shoots one out toward right center field, Calhoun not going to get there. Kepler got it off the end of the bat and falls in for a one out single. Set to know the catcher. He's had a couple of hits tonight. RBI single in the second, a single in the sixth. Looking over to see if he can pick up a sign. Minnesota does run a lot. 42 stolen bases coming into the game. Caught 14 times. Kepler has not attempted a stolen base in the big leagues. Had one this year at AAA. Total 19 last year. All of the minor leagues. Just missed off the plate. One ball, no strikes on Sentinel. Bucks it. The ninth place hitter's on deck.
jab him, fouls it off. One ball, two strikes. One, two. That fouled off. Sticking with more of the fastball. Kepler has it budged from first base, not showing any signs of trying to steal on Salas. Perez. Change out from Fernando Salas. From 10 pitches, eight of them strike so far. Staying away from him, too, and that's why Robinson's playing shallow and toward uh, the line in left field. Pitching toward the shift. Novel idea. They call on the left side. Petit shading him toward the middle. See where Gregorio's at. Another one, two. This one's yanked foul. Just making sure that first base side's awake. Tried to go a uh, change up inside, it looked like. I thought when Carlos was setting up inside, that was more for that two seam fastball to run at the hip and bring it back in the corner, but that was a change up inside. It's one of those pitches you better locate well because if it drifts out over the plate, that becomes a danger zone. Fastball. Eight pitches in this at at this at bat. Six of them foul balls. That is out toward right field. Cole moving back on it, and he will make the catch just shy of the track. Two down. And and Salas wins that battle. Yeah, there's that two seam fastball. Forcing mm -hmm. up just high enough and inside mm -hmm. enough to keep it in the ballpark. Just missed that one. Hit it well. Cole able to go back on this baseball. Good angle he went at, too, going back on that one. Just as he went on the warning track. Box in one for three, had an RBI double in the sixth inning. During the ninth up at the Coliseum in Oakland, Texas leading Oakland 9 to 4. Mentioned Houston won earlier. It's St. Louis 5 to 2. Seattle lost to Tampa Bay 8 to 7 earlier tonight. Here it's 5 4 Halos, top of the eighth. Angels at the bottom of the eighth inning have. Robinson, Giovatella, and Perez do up. 
Yeah, Seattle had a lead seven to four late in that game, but the Rays came back with four and seven. Taiwan Walker. Well, they already have Felix Hernandez on the disabled. Taiwan Walker apparently has a tendon issue on his planter. Fernando Salas really fires that throw over the first base. Talk about a lot of times when you're trying to pick runners off, you just shorten up that throwing motion. That's a longer throwing motion for Fernando. One, two now. Bucks that takes upstairs. He was up to count of two balls, two strikes. Two two got him on the off speed pitch down goes Buxton a couple of strikeouts for Salas. We get to the bottom of the eighth five four angels. Adam in the eighth. Now time for another game break. This time in Colorado, we're going to go check out Trevor Story at the plate, dead center field, home run number 17 on the season for the rookie Phenom. You think about it, that was against Evaldi earlier in the game. He ran into Gerardo Parra in the outfield collision. And Parra left the game, yet Story still will stay in there and hit a home run to dead center field number 17. The young phenom shortstops in baseball. Ryan Presley taking over on the mound, 33rd game, two and three record. 4.290 RA. He pitched last night, went one inning, and struck out a man. Shane Robinson fouls one just above us. First plate appearance for Shane, took over defensively and left the seventh inning for Jeffrey Marte. Robinson, a 235 hitter in 25 games. A home run. Five runs batted in. Presley's fastball is 92 to 96 range. So a slider and a changeup. Popped up on the infield. Dozier, the second baseman, calling for it. One out. Houston Street getting ready. He will try to close out the ninth inning. Twins will have the top of their order coming up. And Nunez, Grossman, and Maurer. J. 
Giovatello lifts one out toward left center field. Buxton moves over. Two down. We'll bring up Carlos Perez. Carlos 0 for 3 tonight. Fastball missing low. Two balls, no strikes. Down towards center field. Hit well, but Buxton's there. Halos go down in order as we head on the ninth inning. Houston Street coming in to try to close it out for the Angels. Up a run. So Whitlock do the brains to know and the guts to say catch Colin and Jason on FS1's new daily talk show speak for yourself weekdays at 3 p.m. Pacific sweeping in the ninth inning Houston Street on the mound to try to close it out 5-4 Halo's on top Houston had a rough outing in his last appearance that was on Saturday against Cleveland allowing three runs on four hits a game in which the Angels eventually won the bottom of the ninth inning He's got the top of the order coming up here. Nunez, Grossman, and Maurer. That's the thing about closer. You just have to have that short memory. Just forget about what happened in the past. Put yourself in position to let the club win their first game against Minnesota this season. No other changes for the Angels to start this ninth inning. Eduardo Nunez will lead things off. Nunez one for one in his career against Street. He's 0 for 4 tonight. A couple of fly ball outs, a strikeout, and a ground out. First one's in there for a strike. Off the plate.
One one. This is the ground ball towards second. Actually, that's Petit at second yes. base. Ryan over at short. Good range there for Petit, who's done a nice job both at second and short. A little third. Tough night last night, but it has been very, very good defensively. Robbie Grossman, two for three, single, a double, and a walk. One ball, one strike. One ball, two strikes. Houston's had uh, some troubles with left-handed batters this year. Hit 364 against him. He's had a tough time getting lefties to chase that pitch off the outside corner. Oh, he gets it here on the off-speed pitch. Two down. They don't do that change up down and away. Had pretty good patience against Houston Street as far as left-handed batters not going after this pitch, but a perfect pitch right here. Real good change up. Grossman could not make contact. Bauer takes outside. Two for three tonight, single. And an RBI triple. Off speed. A good one, too. That's one of the few swings. You see Mauer trying to pull the baseball, trying to lift it. And he knows exactly what his role is here now to do some damage. And, and there's a very good closer who's been consistent throughout his career. Houston Street knows that. Trying to take advantage of Bauer here. 1-1. One, one. Off the plate. Two balls, one strike. Trevor Plouffe is on deck. Two on to Bauer. Looking off speed, got that fastball by him, two and two. That's a danger zone. That's on the inner half of the plate, the part of the plate that Bowers had success. Here's a two two. Line to left field. Robinson's there. Like that baby up as the Angels pick up game two by the final of five to four. Yeah, some good defense throughout this game. Some timely hitting. Johnny Giavatella, a big game. Two run home run. Cole Calhoun, a solid game himself. Well pitched. Jasheen picks up the W through the ball very well. The bullpen solid. Defense even better. As the Angels finally figure a way to be able to beat the Minnesota Twins, win this one five to four. Jolice Yassine picks up the win and with two home runs hit tonight. A total of $14,800 was raised for prostate cancer research. To make a donation, just go online to homerunchallenge.org. Yassine able to pick up the W and the bullpen able to hang on there, nursing that uh, one run lead late as Jolice picks up his second win of the season. Houston Street notches the save. That's his seventh of the season. The Angels even up the series at a game of peace. Pick up their first W against the Twins on the year. Yeah, that's the amazing thing. And then an opportunity to win a series tomorrow with Hector Santiago on the mound. Cole Calhoun had a nice game once again today. Jumping on some pitches early on. He homered, had an RBI double. Two total runs batted in. 
Cole is out of the field with Alex Curry. Alex. Thank you, Victor. Cole, you guys needed a big win. Talk about this complete team effort and turnaround you saw tonight. Well, we had a good pitching effort by Chassin and uh, swung the bats well and um, came out with a W. Bullpen locked it down. And speaking of swinging the bat well, you had a pair of hits, a couple RBIs. What was key to your swing tonight? Just trying to get good pitches to hit. A little better than last night. <laughs> and you guys tied up the series here tonight. Like I said, big win. What's going to be key for this team to really get things going? You know, we're going to have to keep swinging the bats like we are and get the pitching performances like we did tonight. So hopefully we keep that going and, and get on a roll here. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. The Angels take game two against the Twin, tying up the series, but stick around for Angels Live next with Patrick O'Neill and Jose Moda right here on Fox Sports West.